a word of welcome to all of you. Uh, today, recording in progress is uh, specifically to receive an update from the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure on the uh, progress uh, made with regard to the release of land uh, to uh, Housing Development Agency as, uh, as part and parcel of the, the commitment that was made. So hence uh, today's meeting. But of course, let me, without any waste of time, just indicate that in terms of uh, in terms of our agenda, uh, we will uh, uh, formally request the uh, uh, from following the welcome, formally request the committee secretary to table apologies. Any apologies? Uh, yes, Chairperson, as I've already alluded, uh, we have received apology from the minister who is attending a cabinet meeting, and also the acting DG who is attending uh, the meeting in the portfolio committee, and also the two standing apologies for uh, Honorable uh, Lanzmann and Honorable Matteo. Thank you, Chair. Oh, great. Uh, I think let's let's uh, let's know those apologies. And without any waste of time, uh, uh, extend uh, also a word of greetings to all uh, our members uh, of the committee and also the de deputy minister uh, and her team. And uh, then uh, following that, invite the deputy minister to give us uh, 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 remarks, opening remarks with regard to the presentation. DM. Uh, thank you, thank you, uh, Honorable Chairperson. A very good morning to your good self, as well as uh, the Honorable Members of the uh, Select Committee. Um, the support, uh, the DDG from our department, as well as uh, the support of the committee in, in Parliament, um, and, and our guests. Uh, indeed, uh, Chairperson, let me uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, I am. I must. I must upfront uh, declare, Honourable Chairperson, that I'm struggling between two meetings: uh, the Portfolio Committee as well as the Select Committee. The Portfolio Committee started already at nine, and I was. Uh, uh, there to lead the department because our minister took very ill yesterday um, afternoon uh, as, as we were coming from um, Salgana Bay where we were handing over uh, the, the site in, in, in terms of uh, the work that has been done on that site to refurbish and uh, uh, to condition that uh, um, harbor, small harbor, for economic development, and um, we 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 really yesterday felt uh, proud that uh, public words uh, gave meaning to uh, the, the 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 motto of the department uh, that South Africa works because of public works. Because yesterday we were with a very elated community uh, of Saldana Bay, seeing how that uh, facility currently is functioning. And and uh, uh, our minister took ill from when as we were coming from there, and she has had to see a doctor. She's she's not just not well. Um. And hence, I, I'm, I'm making this plea that I will be struggling uh, between the two meetings because the portfolio committee is also dealing with a, a critical points. But coming to this meeting, honorable chairperson, the, 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 the topic um, uh, on land, uh, it talk, talks to land and property rights and the role the department can play therein understanding that uh, the, the land and pro property rights are uh, constitutional matters, but uh, as well as uh, 
the concurrent function that uh, public works has uh, with respect to the national department uh, working concurrently uh, on these matters with uh, the provinces. We have had to have engagements with the provinces uh, around the issue of uh, the, the release of land to especially that which is targeting development of our communities, uh, especially uh, with respect to human settlements. Um, the report uh, gives detail of how much uh, of that has taken place and uh, where challenges would be and where, what we are doing about those challenges. But mine is to appreciate the fact that uh, from time to time we appear before the committees to give meaning uh, to our democracy, uh, the notion of uh, being a, an accountable and transparent uh, government. Um, it, it, it's that opportunity and we really appreciate it. Um, I have on the, on the platform uh, with me the TTG um, responsible, um, Ms. Sasa Suban. She will be taking us through uh, the, the, the presentation and we shall be assisting each other. She has also her team with her. Um, uh, that on its own chair that it is, I'm, I'm talking about her, uh, is, is impressive in a male dominated economic space. Um, uh, thank you for the opportunity, Chair. I will now hand over to uh, Ms. Sasa Suban, with your permission, of course. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank, 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 thank you, DM, for the, the uh, opening remarks. Uh, but also, we, we take note of the fact that there is another meeting that is taking place. And uh, uh, as a result thereof, we appreciate the, the uh, uh, the uh, uh, steps taken by the deputy minister to also grace our, our meeting. So uh, with that, uh, we definitely would uh, allow the minister to, 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 to start between the two. And uh, Ms. Sasa, the floor is yours, it's directed by the DM. Good morning, Chair. I'm trying to open my camera. I'm struggling a little bit. Okay, there you go. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, DM. Um, good morning, honorable members. I'm Sasa Subin. I'm the DDT for Real Estate Investment Services. And within my branch, we have a branch called the Disposal Component that is responsible for the Land Reform Program. Uh, and with the IMC, uh, intrinsically involved in the Interministerial Committee with the Deputy President to fast track uh, the land reform program, specifically like the DM has mentioned for DPW to release strategic parcels of land that will support economic growth, development, um, spatial integration, as well as uh, fast tracking human settlements development. Chair, with your permission, if I can switch off the camera, because I would need to, to beam in my presentation, and also just to indicate thank you for the opportunity. I'm joined by Stephen Manietzi. Unfortunately, my director lost his mum, so he's not able to, to be here with us today, Mr. Moses Trele, who's an integral part of this program. I needed to acknowledge that. Thank you, Chair. Permission granted, Mr. Stephen. Thank you. Just going to share my screen. Okay. Thank you very much. And um, just to, to reinforce, we um, are briefing the select committee on the transfer of land parcels um, to the Housing Development Agency, commonly known as the HDA, and with specific reference to 
the land parcels that have been alluded to in the cabinet memorandum number three of 2019. The uh, outline of the presentation will allude to the CAB memo. We'll provide the progress on um, the, the transfer of land, uh, both for National Department of Public Works, specifically to the Human Settlements Program, and then provide um, progress. Also, we're taking the opportunity to give some progress in terms of our concurrent mandate on the progress of the land reform, specifically for human settlements um, by our provincial departments of uh, public works, and we'll indicate the way forward as well. Dear and honorable members, um, the cabinet memorandum uh, number three of 2019 approved 167 land parcels under the custodianship of the Department of Public Works and Infrastructure, measuring 14,105 hectares to be released. And, and this must be accordingly aligned to the priority housing development areas um, for the period 2019-2020 to 24-25. Now in this regard, uh, in terms of the CAB memo, a hundred and um, uh, they, they identified about 156 priority uh, housing development areas, but subsequently this has been reduced to about 57 um, because more spatial planning was undertaken aligned to um, Spluma, uh, et cetera, and all other planning legislation. So we work with the Department of um, uh, Human Settlements and HDA align not only the human settlements program, but also um, uh, other development uh, that is transpiring, especially new development that Public Works is undertaken um, to ensure that service delivery is aligned to human settlements development. I can give an example in terms of the social cluster, um, uh, the, the, the SASA, the labor, the home affairs, et cetera, so that we align accordingly and plan. So thus far, um, in terms of uh, uh, going back to the CAB mem memorandum, our high level verification and due diligence process to determine the viability and the availability of the 167 land parcels to be released to HDA. We, um, we, 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 we have found that 91 land parcels measuring 920 hectares cannot be released. And these are for the following reasons. 28 land parcels measuring 370 hectares were not available uh, because they were utilized by some of our user departments. Um, some of them, the custodianship and the vesting thereof belong to uh, other government departments, including SOEs. And a lot of those land parcels were also privately owned. Further, a total of 63 land parcels measuring 550 hectares uh, listed in the CAB memo are currently in use by the Department of Defense. Uh, and these comprise, the 63 land parcels comprise of four military bases. In the next slide, I will provide more detail in that regard. The land parcels that we are alluding to in terms of the 63 land parcels these are occupied, and this is mainly in the Western Cape, they're occupied by the Department of Defense, and they're all strategic properties for the Department of Defense, uh, save for Tambor's Kloof, we did a site inspection there, and um, that portion of land is significantly underutilized. So in Tambor's Kloof, we're looking at a highest and best use, um, we've commissioned a highest and best use uh, um, feasibility, and we'll work with the Department of Defense to see how we can um, share um, uh, that particular piece of land and release the other portions through to, um, through to the HDA for development. So that's what's undertaking there. Young Field is a strategic uh, requirement for the DOD. Um, there's also portions of vacant land there that that uh, is in bio-sensitive um, areas, environmental sensitive areas, and will not be able to be utilized for uh, human settlement development purposes. 
We've got the Wingfield Naval Base that is also currently utilized. Um, it is underutilized to, to a vast uh, extent as well. Uh, there's 36 hectares that we also put into a, a planning realm to determine how we can extract 36 uh, hectares from the 195 to maximize the usage for human settlements purposes. That's also under um, uh, 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 on the go at the moment as well. And then we've got the Ace Force, um, Air Force Base Ace to Plus, which is also a strategic operational military base and an airfield utilized as an airfield currently. And unfortunately, there's no underutilized parcels of land here. So in terms of the provincial breakdown, um, we've broken it down if we can, in, in, in total, uh, linking back to the CAB memo, there's 167 land parcels. This is the breakdown per province. A lot of land parcels are in the Western Cape. Um, and the extent uh, as per the CAB memo uh, equals 14,105. As indicated, 91 of these land parcels are not available. And then, um, yeah, so, so um, we're working now with um, 32 land parcels uh, that um, we need to process further. We successfully processed already 44 land parcels, and that equals an extent of 2,257. The next slide will provide more detail as well. So, like I indicated, just to, to, to reinforce, um, in, in total now from the, 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 the 14,105 land parcels, we're able to release 13,185. We have released 44 land parcels. Um, we, we require then um, to release uh, further 32 land parcels that is uh, measuring an extent of 10,350 hectares. Um, we'd like to, to, um, to issue the, the special power of attorney, et cetera, and uh, proceed with this, but currently we are waiting um, HDA to, to provide us with the, the relevant um, documentation, including um, the high level feasibilities that they undertake on these land parcels, also to determine what yield that they will have on the land parcels for development. Um, so we are waiting for that. We, we engaged uh, HDA almost on a weekly basis. Uh, they indicate that they are working on processing these requests, these formal requests uh, through to us. Um, and um, currently some of the challenges that they're having is uh, working with the municipalities to, to get the development yield, et cetera, and align it to uh, bulk service develop, uh, uh, um, uh, sorry, bulk service availability um, uh, with municipalities. So they, they are working on that and we hope to get this by end of uh, the quarter, um, by end of um, June, hopefully, at least some of the land parcels so that we can start to process and, and, and reach targets. Um, So we thought we'd also share with, uh, with yourself and the honorable members, uh, the work that's also been done by provincial public works in terms of the concurrent mandate. Um, we do at, at the at MinMAC level, um, we request the provincial departments to share their uh, land reform program uh, with us, which we also give progress to the IMC. And this is this slide particularly alludes to that. Um, on the human settlements, um, for the human settlements program already since 29, uh, sorry, from 2021 to 2022 financial year, the provinces uh, have released 960 land parcels for human settlements. Um, so it's quite, quite a number of land parcels that, that they have released as well across the provinces. So we, we share that particular slide with you as well. The challenges that we, we have in terms of releasing land parcels um, uh, for, for uh, 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 
redistribution tenure as well as for human settlements in general, is that the supporting documentation uh, right across the board is, is sometimes, um, you know, it takes, it takes a while to come through. And um, also this is relevant to the housing development agency uh, where, like I indicated, we are waiting for the uh, processing for the 10,000 odd land parcels that my colleagues are working on. Now we require um, their feasibility, their viability studies. We, are, we are require that they got to show alignment to SPLUMA and the priority development areas, as well as the extent of the development. So that is important. Those are some of the requirements that we have before we can then um, process uh, that through our value chain, which also will look at um, you know, a physical verification of the site, processing of the submissions, checking um, ownership and that type of thing. But uh, my, my, my team is, is um, you know, they, they work very hard at that and we've got a process in place to address this. The other challenges that uh, both provinces um, and, and national has is sometimes the vesting challenges, which we are also addressing with the Department of Agriculture and Rural Development. Um, as part of our processing, we also check if there's no land claims on that particular site. And also like, like I've alluded to in the presentation, some of the sites that have been identified by uh, HDA, they are user departments um, you know, that are utilizing the site for their strategic imperatives. And therefore there's non-availability of that land due to um, you know, the strategic requirement by user departments such as defense, SAPs uh, in, in particular. Yeah, the next slide I've put through was just to show and, and give uh, honorable members and yourself comfort that whatever planning we do, it's aligned to the National Spatial Development Framework. It's aligned to the priority housing development areas that is identified by human settlements and the HDA. Um, and and we, we, we spatially map um, the, the properties uh, together with the HDA, they, they do spatial mapping and also in terms of our asset register, we do the same. And what we also, uh, we, we've done recently is to then also put pressure on the HDA to show us on the land parcels that we have released and where they've started work um, to show us some of the yields that they're having on the land because I don't believe that we should be releasing the land without showing the impact that we're having, especially for development and the growth of our communities. So um, they have sent us some of those slides. Uh, at the next time I will, I will present on, on that. Um, yeah. So in terms of the way forward and um, as per the IMC resolution, um, DPW will sponsor a CAB memo to brief cabinet accordingly on the, the progress as I've articulated today, and also to indicate some of our challenges in not being able to release uh, uh, you know, the 91 land parcels uh, and, and, and the reasons thereof. Um, Cho, uh, like I indicated, we, we, we also have um, uh, a technical team um, constituting some pl planning specialists that will undertake some studies on the land that we, we believe, um, for example, the pre in, in the presentation, um, we, we we've, uh, made reference to the, the DOD land that is underutilized. So we will look at those parcels of land um, that comes through from the CAP memo on how we can um, uh, have a, a mixed use type of development there. One of the land parcels um, that is not available is in uh, Blauberg's Trund. Um, it is in the region of about um, 217 odd hectares. Um, and um, yeah, so, so that we will look at also in terms of how we're gonna develop highest and best use on that and present that also to cabinet. Um, Chair, we will pause there and um, hope that the select committee notes the progress by public works and will continue to accelerate this important program. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, uh, uh, Ms. Suban, uh, for the presentation.
uh, to the select committee. Uh, I will now uh, uh, open the floor uh, for the uh, committee members to engage with the presentation. Uh, <clears throat> uh, for clarity uh, seeking uh, purposes, but also for, for concrete proposals that members might be might be uh, interested in. Uh, over to you members. Can members indicate that by using the uh, raise your hand option? I've noted uh, Honorable uh, Apleni. Uh, let's start, let's start, let's start with Honorable Apleni. Uh, the floor is yours, uh, Honorable Apleni. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thanks uh, for the presentation. Uh, I'll be very brief, Chair. Uh, you know, the concern that I have is that uh, in many instances, uh, you would have uh, the issues around uh, land where people are being uh, uh, kicked out of the land in some cases where they have uh, built structures for themselves. Uh, you would see that the municipalities through the courts and all of that uh, going as far as demolishing those structures. Uh, one understands that uh, in some cases it would be a matter of a court order and all of that. But the question that I have, Chair, is that uh, wouldn't it be uh, more better if, for instance, in some cases the department would consider that some of these people have already built the structures in those areas and they have already settled there? Uh, how about uh, in the case of giving these land parcels that the department would consider in some cases, uh, instead of demolishing those structures and doing all of those things, uh, consider giving those uh, pieces of land to those people who are already occupying them. Uh, I understand this is being politicized in many cases where uh, it would be aligned with some political organizations to say that these people were actually agitated to go and uh, put the structures in those areas illegally. Uh, in most cases, you would find out that, for instance, uh, in what 46 uh, PCM, I think around the airport uh, in East London, the people were removed. They, even the court would say to the municipality, but you should have not removed the structures. And it was instructed to assist those people to build those structures again. But until today, you find a situation where nothing is being done. So my question is, wouldn't it be better for the department before uh, the government would go as far as demolishing the structures which have been built so hard by the most poor people, uh, consider trying to see whether those structures cannot be, or those pieces of land cannot be given to those people uh, as, 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 as uh, land parcels. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, Honorable Plenty, I've noted Honorable Dango, the floor is yours. Thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson, I am a bit concerned at the speed about the uh, at which these transfers are being effected. The question of land housing is a, is a big issue. And I would urge the department to speed up and actually get these transfers done sooner rather than later. The other issue I raised, Chairperson, is a purely selfish interest. We live in Acacia Park, all of us. We border on the Wingfield uh, Air Base. They don't maintain the air base so the snakes come across into Acacia mm -hmm. Park. If that can be um, developed as soon as possible, uh, then MPs or future MPs after, in the next term would not have the same problems. Thank you. That's a selfish concern. Thank you. Thank, thank, thank you, thank you, Honorable, Honorable Dango. Uh, let me just check. From, from, from my side, the, there's a, 
the slide that deals with the, the provincial spread of uh, of the allocation of land, uh, where, where it requires a progress made according to province, it will be important probably from uh, from the team if they could just uh, probably even uh, break uh, that slide down uh, in terms of districts, uh, so that uh, as uh, as, 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 as members of the select committee, we have presence in uh, in, 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 in in our uh, district through constituency constituency presence, so that at least we are more we are more armed. I believe that uh, that will also uh, give more uh, a meaning to to the uh, district development uh, uh, model uh, imperatives. Uh, uh, the, the, the department can provide that information uh, uh, in the next coming, uh, let's say, for seven days uh, to the committee. The, 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 sec the second one uh, uh, relates to, to uh, the, uh, the state land that is uh, uh, under communal uh, land regime, uh, particularly with regard to to uh, a land that is under the watch, watchful eye of traditional leaders. Uh, uh, they are just they are just. Uh, 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 Watchers, or I can say, guardians of uh, of that state land, because in terms of the the uh, agricultural land act, uh, that land is vested uh, in, in, in 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 the state, uh, uh, particularly in the Department of Agriculture. Uh, one of the uh, dilemma that we have with regard to the property regime in South Africa for more than seven years is that uh, the villagers under traditional leadership don't have the benefit of certificate of ownership in terms of the parcel of land that they are occupying. That they are occupying. So I would be more interested to, to get a sense in terms of through this regime, is there no way in terms of uh, uh, the discussion unfolding uh, uh, for the for the, uh, the, the the rural dwellers also to to begin to start uh, 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 enjoying the, the the fruits the fruits of liberation uh, because uh, when you go to town uh, those people have title deeds when you go to rural uh, areas there is no uh, security of tenure so it's an area that we definitely need to to look into uh, because uh, I suspect the same program, the same program that is unfolding uh, uh, could be conceptualized to benefit the, the rural dwellers. I'm raising this point because uh, uh, in the past, the communal, right, communal Land Rights Act was passed uh, by parliament, but the constitutional court reversed uh, that bill because it was discriminatory in nature, because it created a dual system of property regime. And as a result thereof, to, to a larger extent, uh, it was uh, felt to be divisive and also discriminatory uh, in terms of uh, property regime, because we wanted to create property regime both for the uh, rural dwellers and also for those that are living in, in, in urban towns. Thank you. Let me give over to uh, uh, um, Sasha Suba to, to respond. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, in terms of uh, Honorable Apleni, um, we note the, the concern, especially in terms of uh, structures uh, that have been built. The good news is that, um, is that uh, the, the Human Settlements Program um, acknowledges that there's a lot of informal structures 
and informal dwellers. And what they are trying to do with their program is to formalize uh, the, the uh, program and also um, look at perhaps uh, formalizing the, the ownership of land. Um, it is a program that they're running. What, what they're actually doing is looking at uh, giving ownership and titles and, and especially for the land so that then when people own the land, they're able then to put up appropriate structures and, and spend more money and obviously increase the value there. So there is a program that uh, Human Settlements is running in that regard. Specifically, um, uh, also though, and, and it will also be linked to the uh, BCM case, when they're doing this, what they do is that they, they look at ensuring that people are in areas that need environmental, um, uh, 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 what's, what is the word I'm looking for, but it must be um, meeting the environmental uh, laws, et cetera. Those, those must be met. Um, those considerations must be taken into account. Now, if we look at the, the, the BCM case, for example, the areas in which the structures were, they were dangerous uh, for the people. Uh, case in point is also in KZN with the flooding where people put informal structures in unsafe areas. Uh, so this is looked at in context, but what they do is um, the human settlements is that with, if it's public works land, for example, and if they need to move people, then it's incumbent, it's required in terms of law that an alternative um, land or dwelling is provided. And I think there's a team that is working on, on um, as this, especially in Greydell, I'm aware there's a team that has been put in place to deal with this matter and uh, with, with human settlements leading this particular project. Um, so just to summarize, um, there is a plan in place by human settlements to formalize uh, informal uh, uh, structures uh, that has been developed. Um, however, it has to be in safe areas. Um, the issue that uh, Honorable Dango um, raised, um, we do acknowledge um, uh, that, that we, we will speed up further. Um, but as, as the, the presentation indicated, there's a massive dependency on HDA. Um, as soon as we get those, uh, the next tranche that aligns to the 10,000 of square meters, we will definitely fast track. We have a program in place and we will drive that uh, with, with my team. So we acknowledge that. Um, Acacia Park, uh, yes, uh, part of the highest and best use that we will look at. And uh, we, we hope to, to also uh, fast track with the DOD, uh, that portion of land where development can happen and hopefully it will, it will assist in terms of the um, challenges that has been experienced there. Um, finally, Chair, in, uh, thank you for acknowledging the provincial spread. And we, we note that going forward, we will provide the breakdown per uh, district a link to the DDM model. And we will attempt to provide that in seven days, linking in with our provincial counterparts. Um, the, the state land under communal regime, um, Chair, I, I'm not the expert in that regard. It is within the ambit of Department of Agriculture, Rural Development and Land Reform. And they are the custodians, as you indicated, of uh, communal land. But they're putting, um, uh, they, they've acknowledged everything that, that you have stated as well. There was recently a workshop as well held with the um, heads, the, uh, the, the owners, the community owners uh, of the land, as well as the traditional leaders, uh, to look at coming to some solution on how we can have security of tenure, especially for dwellers that have been, you know, um, living on that land, communal dwellers for, 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 for long periods of time. And they're trying to bring that into a policy regime. Um, but yeah, I'll pause there because that is work in progress and rural development is heading that. Uh, thank you, Chair. Thank you, thank you, thank you, uh, Ms. Uh, 
Suban for responding to the, to the questions. The, the breakdown at the uh, level of district. Uh, bye bye. Nick. Can you say anything with regard to that? May, may yes. I? Sorry. Um, yes, Deputy Minister. May I come in, Chair? Thank you very much. And uh, let, let me acknowledge the, the questions uh, from the honorable members. Uh, they, they, it's questions that make us uh, think in order for us to tick. <clears throat> Chair, on, on, the, on the dimension of structures, I, I just wanted to add that uh, in as much as it is um, painful uh, to have to demolish that which people have uh, so hardly had uh, worked hard to build for themselves, we also need to balance that with the kind of um, disasters that government find itself having to deal with later on. Uh, you know, there are areas called the Enlovi. Wherever you go to those areas, Enkanini Enlovi, which means we came here by force and we will stay here by force. Um, you find that those people are either in, the, in, the, in, in a playing field which is disastrous to build on. And when disasters strike, it, it becomes now the baby of government to, to assist those people who forcefully uh, took those, that land. But also it promotes indirectly the, the culture of anarchy. That if, if, one, if, we, if, if I want to do it here, I will do it here irrespective. And I don't think uh, a, as a constitutional state, we, we as public representative should be seen to condone that behavior. Um, because it's a behavior that then draws the country back. When you think you are forward, uh, you, you are drawn back because now you have to deal with a more difficult situation, which could have been avoided had everybody uh, followed the law. So I, I do want to say, and it's the, the example of, of um, uh, East London and, um, and the airport is a sad one because that piece of land, um, most part of it was intended uh, in fact, is owned not even by, by public works per se, by, by the airport uh, the company uh, for sole purpose of extending the airport, the runway. Now people come and build houses at the, till, at the end of a runway. When, when an, an, an airplane uh, cannot um, what land or take off properly? <clears throat> what happens to those houses at, at the end of a runway? And and these are things that we we it, it, it would be a disaster which could have been avoided, but which is not which which would be um, terrible for government to have to deal with. Um, and yes. Being a responsible government, we, we have engaged the communities there. We have moved uh, some of the, the communities, but there are those who insist to, to remain there. The, 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 the government has availed some of its farms, some of its land, both the metro and the province, uh, as well as uh, national government. People are there's a, there's a there's a residential area, new residential area in Boxwood. Houses are being built, but people just don't want to move today. They want to remain where they are, where it is dangerous. 
Now, we, we can't be expected to promote anarchy. Uh, that, we, 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 we will not uh, try to be popular and promote anarchy. It, it, is, it would be uncalled. We are assisting to move those communities, those who cannot even build, who are in checks, those who, who do not have the, the money uh, to, to, to buy land, they are being moved by human settlements uh, to elsewhere. But as I say, as public representatives, we must be able to promote um, good governance. We must be able to promote uh, lawful uh, activities. Uh, we, we can't be seen to be promoting anarchy. We can't be seen to be promoting lawlessness in a constitutional democracy. Secondly, um, on, on the question of the seven days, I note that Sasa has committed herself, but uh, understanding that we depend, uh, that analysis depend on the extent to which the province is able to, to bring us that information. And I'm worried that we commit to seven days uh, on something that we still depend on others to bring to us. Uh, I would say, Chair, as soon as it is made available, we will share it with, with your good self, but we will work towards that seven days. Um, but I wouldn't want to, to really say it, it, it will be seven days because uh, remember, when we commit here, there are implications. <laughs> Uh, I, I just wanted to make that plea on the seven days. On the, two weeks ago, Chair, the national government led by the deputy president who's chairing the IMC on land. That's the extent to which we take the matters of land seriously. There's a, an interministerial committee of public works, land and rural development uh, and agriculture um, human settlements, uh, justice, you know, all the, the departments that matter in the question of, of land. There is that IMC in which we participate as a department, which facilitated uh, through the Department of um, Agriculture, uh, Land Reform and Rural Development. We facilitated a, a, a summit which had more than 1,500 uh, participants just last week. And one of the, of the critical issues, uh, that summit was communal land summit uh, because it had to deal and engage deeper with the challenges uh, that are experienced when dealing with communal land. Um, and this, the question of uh, the, the security of tenure, the questions of the, the title deed, and the fact that uh, the patterns of ownership of land in communal areas, um, that the homestead is not necessarily an individual's property, it's a family property. And once you, you, you give in there, or you provide in the, the issues of uh, title deeds, um, who in this family owns this title deeds? And what happens if this one person who has got this title deed uh, messes up with the ownership thereof? What happens to the rest of the family? So those were, questions that we're engaging with. Um, uh, and some proposals have been coming to the fore that no, the, the title deed must be, yeah, must be a special type that would be given to the king. I'm, I'm kind of illustrating here that um, the issue of common, communal land and title deeds is a, is, a, is a sensitive one, is also a complicated one. And we have engaged uh, communities 
who live in communal areas. Uh, together with the traditional leadership, the House of uh, National House and Provincial Houses were represented in, this, in these discussions. And um, without me going into the whole of the summit, uh, I just wanted to illustrate that this is a matter that uh, as, as government and as, as a country, we assist with in terms of engaging. And we, we have um, proposals on the table which must be tested uh, the, what um, the impact both legally, economically, and otherwise would be. Um, and I, I think those, uh, the resolutions once finalized will be shared with uh, the various committees um, and we will, once we receive them as well, we will uh, share with the committee. I, I thought that I, I needed to reflect on those and thanks for the opportunity, Chair. Thank you, thank, 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 thank you, DM, uh, for, 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 for the clarity. Uh, the, the NA is rising next week and uh, the NCOP will be will be uh, a week uh, uh, thereafter, uh, meaning that uh, we'll de facto be having eight weeks. So it will be uh, seven days, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, Minister. Uh, we can uh, uh, give the, the Minister's team uh, uh, until we, we, we come back. Thank you. So thank you for, 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 for that uh, presentation and clarity and also response to the engagement uh, as raised by the, by the uh, members. We would want to, to then, uh, uh, in the absence of uh, any follow-up, then uh, 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 take this opportunity to express our gratitude to uh, the team led by the minister and uh, officially uh, release, release the, the minister and the team as we uh, uh, engage on in-house issues. Thank you, uh, Deputy Minister and the team. Thank you, thank you, Chair, and um, all the best. Thank you, thank you, thank you, dear. Uh, Committee thank Secretary, uh, the minutes. Thanks, 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 thanks for that. Uh, these are this, these are the minutes of the first of uh, uh, the the minutes of the first of June 2022, where we received a, a progress report on the rollout of the integrated public transport network from the Department of Transport. Uh, those are the attendees, honourable members, uh, and the apologies. And then the uh, uh, support team, uh, the, the open remarks that were made, uh, apologies again. And then that is how the structure of the presentation was crafted. And then the comments raised by members. And then uh, we also dealt with the units of the previous, uh, uh, meetings and then the announcement uh, on the additional work given to the select committee. Mm -hmm. Any 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 addition, subtraction, correction from honorable members? In the absence of any addition and subtraction, can we then get a mover for the adoption of the minutes? Thank I still move, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Shuri. Move and then Honorable Dango second. Uh, any contrary view? The minutes are therefore duly adopted uh, uh, as a true reflection of what transpired in the on the meeting of the 1st of June, uh, 2022. Uh, like as indicated, uh, uh, members, were there additional work uh, given, uh, given to, to the select committee 
we we will be uh, in our progress uh, on our program for the next term. Uh, uh, request a slot for the induction of the department uh, on the work of the department. Uh, it's a matter that will uh, that will request the the management team to work on. Uh, it, it might be important uh, if if honourable members agree even uh, have a, have a, the 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 uh, just a day a day a day dealing with the with the induction. Uh, so we will be working on that with the, with the team, and uh, if we can get uh, get uh, get get that permission from the from, from 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 the chair of the house, from the house chair, uh, to, to 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 arrange that. But we will definitely keep uh, our members uh, uh, informed on that. I'm just ready so that at least. Uh, members must know that uh, we can't just uh, venture into an unknown territory without an induction. Uh, and therefore, we will be uh, looking into a program where we'll be, we will be uh, getting inducted on the work of the MNE uh, department. Uh, having said that, uh, let's then agree that the, the uh, agenda of today has been uh, formally exhausted. And that uh, we we are continuing with, uh, with our work uh, uh, today. We will be debating again. Uh, I mean, the plenary, but it will not be the select committee. Uh, we are almost uh, uh, done. Uh, it's only our sister sister committee that is still uh, engaged that must still debate the uh, employment and labor. So, having said that, honourable members, the meeting is formally closed. Uh, committee secretary will be, I suspect, will organize a, a management a management meeting, uh, even if it means uh, sometimes next week, just to work on the modalities of that induction. Thank you, honorable members. The meeting is adjourned now. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, 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 thank